welcome back to the Oral Health Podcast. So we are here talking about uh, sugar impacts um, on our mouths, as we often do, but we've actually got two experts in today from um, an organisation that is lobbying the sugar tax levy in soft drinks. I'm going to talk to them a little bit more about what that actually means, as well as the impact that sugar has on our bodies and why it's important to be mindful about the amount of sugar that we are consuming. So if um, we've got Kate and Catherine in today, do you want to just introduce yourselves quickly? Uh, I'm Kate. So I am, uh, I work for Sustain, which is part of the Recipe for Change Coalition. Um, and I'm the project manager for the campaign. Um, and I'm sure we'll tell you a bit more about that campaign as well as we dive in. Hi I'm Catherine I'm the director of the Obesity Health Alliance and we are part of the Recipe for Change Coalition as well and I'm a registered public health nutritionist. I also as a hopefully slightly relevant aside um, was one of the co-founders of Action on Sugar some 10 years ago before the uh, soft drinks levy came into place so um, I followed the journey from its inception. That's fantastic because we I've, I've see action on sugar campaigns all over the place so that's quite cool and uh karen's here as uh, as always for anyone that doesn't know karen uh, she has been a dental nurse for a very long time expert on all things mouth health and um is here just to provide some dental context to the the sugar conversations that we are having today did i do you did i do you fair there karen well, you always seem to manage to get in that I'm much older than you by the al- amount of time I've been qualified. But yes, that's perfect, Sophie. Thank you very much, as always. <laughs> that's not true. But anyway, if um, we would just kick off then. So do you want to just start, uh, maybe Kate, if you want to go first, just explaining. Do you want to just explain what the soft drink levy is? Yeah, so... Um... The soft drinks industry levy, which you might have also heard called the sugar tax or the sugary drinks tax, um, that came in in 2018. So we're coming up to the six year anniversary of that. Um, And it's a tax on uh, manufacturers of soft drinks based on the amount of sugar in their drinks. Um, The idea of the tax is to get manufacturers to reduce the amount of sugar in their drinks. and because they want to avoid paying the levy. Um, And it's been really successful at doing that. There's huge amounts of sugar been reduced um, from soft drinks. Um, And for those who've chosen not to reduce the amount of sugar or not reduce it as much, then they pay the levy. um, And that goes or has primarily gone towards children's health programs. Um, So it helped establish the national um, school breakfast program, um, the holiday um, food and activities program, and uh, all sorts of other children's health initiatives. Um, So it's been a real sort of win-win for health, having a really big um, impact on on the amount of sugar in drinks um, and starting to see some health impacts as well. Um, And then, then, yeah, helping to fund programs through, through the levy revenue as well. That's amazing. If people don't want to cut the sugar, the money that they pay is actually then still going back into into the pot, into to helping more people. That's really cool. Yeah, they took a really interesting approach of doing this policy when they designed it, which I would say none of us sort of health professionals even thought of an option where they wanted to give different rates for different levels of sugary drinks. So you'll be aware that there's hugely different levels of soft uh, of sugar in soft drinks. And that was something Action on Sugar was able to highlight really well. And they managed to come up with these different thresholds so that if you had um, less than five grams of sugar in your drinks, then you would be exempt from the tax. So you wouldn't have to pay anything at all. If you had between five and eight grams, which is a large amount of the soft drinks that were on the market, then you had to pay a lower rate of about 18 pence per litre. And if you had a very sugary drink over eight grams, then you pay the higher rate, the 24 pence per litre. So companies could really take the option that they that they felt suited them. So you'll be know some, know some very well-known brands decided not to make any changes to their drinks at all. And so I'm delighted to say that a lot of the money that has paid for the National School Breakfast Programmes has come from the likes of Coca-Cola, who did not reformulate their drinks. Whereas many of, in fact, some of their own, their other brands as well, and many of the other drinks companies decided to reduce the sugar to below the five grams so that they didn't have to pay the levy at all. We're still seeing a huge range in drinks out there. Um, There were some certain exemptions in place. So small producers, so you might see a a local company that makes a a local lemonade, they would be exempt. And there was also exemptions made for for, um, milk-based soft drinks and also fruit-based drinks as well, with the consideration that they may be brought into the levy further on down the line. Why was the... um, the 
the decision made to make those those exemptions for say the smaller businesses and um because they are smaller they are less able to make the payment for the levy but at the same time the sugar content could still be be quite high why was the um decision made to kind of make them exempt from it well, you have to remember that policy is not always designed with necessarily health in mind. Um, they have to take into consideration the burden on businesses. And so at the moment, small businesses in the UK have a lot of exemptions, not just to do with nutrition and health, but for other sort of tax reasons as well, because we want to try and encourage small businesses to do well. So in the case of nutrition, um, small and medium sized businesses are exempt from things like the locations restrictions, which is junk food by the checkouts. Small out of home businesses don't have to have calorie labeling on their menus and they're going to be exempt from the upcoming advertising restrictions as well. And you'll see that's fairly broad across ac across the um, realm and they do account for a small amount. I mean, it is the big brands that, you know, that are the contributors, particularly in children's diets. Um, you know, a lot of those small producers are quite expensive already, so that puts them out of touch with most of them. So the aim is to try and go for as many people as you can with as less burdensome regulation as possible. Are there any notable brands you can think of besides Coca-Cola, which everyone knows when you go in and you see the Diet Coke next to the regular Coke, there is a price difference there, that actually are big contributors? Or is it mainly funded by Coca-Cola? I mean, really, I can't think of that many drinks now that are still paying that higher rate. Um, off the top of my head, I, I, I think there are some sort of slightly fruity based ones, maybe some ginger beery based ones. There are still some energy drinks that are higher. Um, but one of the other big ones, Pepsi, and their main branch has just reformulated slightly lower as well. Um, so there certainly are drinks out there. But when you, again, when you look at the big sellers, most of them have come down and they've used a mixture of either using um, less sugar and or sweeteners as well. We are seeing new brand, um, new brands of drinks coming onto the market that are using you know, nat literally naturally alternative. So just using natural flavorings without even extra sweetness and flavor as, as well. So we're hoping that it's going to lead to not just having less sugar, but a less sweetness profile of drinks in future. And um, and Kate, what are, um, if we want to just talk about, because obviously this is a company facing initiative, right? What are the benefits for this campaign for the, the general public, the people that are going in and, and buying the products? Um, well, the soft drinks industry levy has been huge in terms of its impact. So um, we've seen there's been 46 million kilos of sugar reduced um, from uh, soft drinks sold. Um, and we're starting to see the health impacts as well of that. So um, there's associations of reductions in obesity of older primary school age girls um, and around 12 percent. Um, reduction in cases of admissions for tooth extractions in hospital as well for children um so this is having a really big impact and at the same time it's not had to the public hasn't had to change their behavior massively either um so the products on the shelves as Kat said there's been a lot more products coming in that are sort of low um low or zero sugar um and so actually the public has access to um a wider range of drinks greater choice um and they haven't had to shift their behaviour hugely. So it's been it's been really beneficial for the public overall. Karen, what do you think about that dental extraction statistic? Because that's, that's something we talk about a lot, is the fact that the number one reason for hospital admissions for general anaesthetic for children is tooth decay, because they need to have the extractions of their teeth under general anaesthetic. That's a huge, huge reduction in that number. Yeah, and I think, um, I mean, we certainly we have not seen a reduction um, per se over, um, I mean, we had a reduction obviously over COVID because kids weren't going in, um, which means it's gone back up again because all of the kids that were waiting are, are now having it. So I think we'll probably have to wait a little bit longer for it to even out again. Um, I mean, certainly it is harder these days to find a, uh, a sugared drink than a diet one. And I think it would be good if, you know, if you were in a restaurant that you didn't actually have to ask for a, a a diet one or a sugar free one, that it was given automatically and you had to ask for the sugar one. If it if it was like, you know, when you go to the doctors and you have a uh, your, your child's given a medicine, they're automatically given the sugar free one these days. 
rather than you used to have to ask for it. So it would be quite nice if that was the way round. But I think for, I'm not sure that the public even have noticed that their drink has had a tax on it. If they drink full fat Coke, they're going to, still going to drink it um, and not worry about the money. But it is good that the money is going somewhere else. But to discourage children, you know, seeing the two together and, and being able to make that sensible swap is always going to be um, beneficial to, uh, you know, from a tooth point of view, but from the rest of the body as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it will be interesting to see that once we've evened out over um, over COVID periods. There's no doubt, though, that I guess because companies are doing this all behind, I wouldn't say behind the scenes, but behind the scenes from the consumer changing their recipes, that they are getting less sugar thanks to this without even even yeah knowing yeah. about it, which is sometimes yeah. the best way to, to do things is to just do it without people even having the choice to load up on, on sugars. That's right. Some people call it health by stealth, which I think is health by stealth. I love brilliant. that. Yeah, <laughs> I think because people don't like having policy done with them. And this went through a consultation and open period. So, you know, it wasn't done behind the scenes. But the idea is exactly that, that you can just carry on buying your normal product, but it has less sugar in it. Mm -hmm. And in most of the cases, the prices haven't actually increased. There's, there's barely a price differentiation between between them we did notice in some out of home companies like cinemas they would put an extra charge on for um and say it was due to the soft drinks industry levy but interestingly many of them decided recently some of the cinema chains and also some of the big fast food chains have decided as you said karen to have the default option as being the sugar free and you actually have to mm. ask for mm. the, the the full sugar version which i just think is a really lovely little sort of I do not a change one mm. i will just mm. say on those dental figures as well that what what the measuring was done it was a modeling study they measured right. what the tooth extraction was now versus what it should have been if we continued okay. as we were so it's yeah. not necessarily lower than it used to be it's lower than it should be should. okay so yeah yeah that makes sense still be some knock -on offense of that coming i the, i think that the, the, definitely that definitely will be just because there are so few policies in obesity that have actually come to fruition i think it's really really interesting to note that because of the levy, those reductions, both in the um, hospital admissions for tooth extractions and also in the case of obesity, those reductions were observed across almost all areas, regardless of deprivation, including the least and the most deprived areas. And you find that with most policies, they actually, things like when you talk about education and labelling and um, sort of helpful interventions to encourage people to make changes, behaviour change interventions, they work better on people that have got the time and the money and the capability to make these changes. And I think that's what's one of the real strengths of this is the fact that it's had equal effects on those from from the more deprived groups as well and that's the kind of policy that we want to see a lot more of um so we hope that this is the yeah the start of something good and and also this is we talked a little about the burden of burden of, on regulation of businesses because sales of soft drink were able to continue people were allowed to continue marketing them people were allowed to buy them there weren't any changes in pricing they actually found that sales of soft drinks continue to increase which many of us may not think that that's a great thing but actually when trying to convince government this is a good policy that they're not losing money from it it's important for them to know that actually sales of soft drinks have continued to grow it's not a declining market just that the sugary drinks have come down so significantly yeah. I think worth adding, so before the soft drinks uh, entry levy was brought in, there was a lot of opposition from industry. And then just a few weeks ago, I was at an event with um, a mixture of sort of drinks industry and health uh, sort of charity campaigners. And someone from industry said, I think we can all agree the soft drinks entry levy has been a complete success, win-win. And so for everyone nodding along. So you can see that huge shift in, in opinion. They said they were going to be put out of business. People were going oh, to be leaving the country because they wouldn't be able to do businesses were going to be leaving the UK because they wouldn't be able to afford to do business here. People would be put out of work. Small um soft sorry, what are they called? Um sort of small independent local shops were going to be put out of business completely um and out of home. And funnily enough, we're seeing a lot of those arguments pay out now with the with the idea of restrictions on the age of sale of smoking. So increasing the age of sale that they're bringing in all the small and local convenience stores to say that it's going to be problematic for them. But the irony is that most of them are quite happy with that. They don't want to be send, selling cigarettes to children. Most of them do not want to be selling energy drinks to children. But until there's any regulations in place, there's no no way for them to stop doing that. And as well, these mm. are popular with now they're popular with the 
with these businesses because they see it as being a fair and level playing field. Everyone knows the parameters of which they need to act. So in the cases before, really early on before this policy was introduced, we managed to obtain a um, commitment from Tesco's that they were going to reduce the sugar in all of their own branded soft drinks by 5% every year. That was their plan of doing it, which actually would have had a huge, huge impact. But they were saying it's going to be very difficult for them to do that without everyone else doing the same thing because will people just switch to different drinks instead? But the fact that everybody's done it, everyone's accepted it, everyone understands the reasoning behind it. It was popular by the public, for the public as well. Um, and due to a huge amount of work um, in the public by Jamie Oliver, by our groups and, and other campaigners as well to try and show that sugar was harmful, I think that helped the real broad public acceptance of it as well. Like I said, I was going to come back to milky drinks. Um, there are a couple of soft drinks drinks that are exempt from the sugar tax so milky drinks and coffee shop drinks being one of them i know kate when we spoke previously you shared some quite shocking statistics about a certain coffee chain that um one of their drinks had over 50 grams of sugar in which i think karen and i's jaws both hit the floor when we heard that uh in supermarkets meal deals like if someone got a full fat coke with a meal deal it doesn't add the price difference onto the meal deal at the end for say so there is a couple of sneaky loopholes people can like get around it with but what do you think is is the answer to that I, I guess or is it even possible to stop those loopholes from happening well at the moment they are part of the policy design and the mention you mentioned about having the drink with the meal deal there now, of course, the meal deal is meant to be for a one person eating occasion and those drinks you will have spotted all 500 mils, which is a two person serving. Um, so you're getting twice the amount for it. And most of the um, retailers actually have those drinks as a bit of a loss leader. You'll, you'll notice it looks like it's really good value when you get one of those more expensive drinks with your meal deal because you've then bought into that brand. You're not going to go anywhere else to get your drink as well. So it's really good for getting people into the shops. It's not a loophole. It was designed within the policy that it was not going to be included. We tried to campaign to get it to be included. Scotland are currently considering having meal deals included as part of theirs. And we had a lot of pushback saying that if you didn't include those drinks in the meal deal, people would just go to a different shop and include them or they'll go to a cafe chain where they may end up getting one of those lovely milk based drinks with 50 grams of sugar in it instead. Ten, you know, over 10 teaspoons of sugar. Um, and the milk-based drinks, again, there was a lot of opposition to including those because of the concerns about whether children would be getting enough um, calcium, which, of course, younger children are not getting their calcium from 50 gram milkshakes. That's not what is happening. That's that's a completely different thing. Young children, certainly by the age of three, should just be having milk and water. And that is it. These milk-based drinks, as they're calling them, I mean, they really are milkshakes. Um, there are slight differences about how these drinks can be treated with sugar. Um, and about the about the use and sweetness in some of these drinks, but in most cases they could just be vastly reduced. And what has been quite interesting is that there has been a threat all along that these drinks were going to be brought into the levy, particularly those on sale in the supermarket. And so we have seen quite a lot of them come down in preparation. The same technology that's being used in drinks and liquids can be used in, in milk-based drinks. So we have seen some of them come down. But as you said, in the out of home, it just seems an absolute free for all. And part of it is due to how those drinks are made, whether they're made with a syrup, whether they're made with added sugar. Some of them are just made with really sweet milk. So they buy the milks already pre-sweetened. Um, all of these things could be changed. They could all be brought into the levy. It just requires a little bit of work. Um, and we hope that that's something that's going on behind the scenes. We're currently waiting for the Department of Health's um, Office for Health Improvements and Disparities to do a monitoring report, the next sugar reduction report on what's going on with milk-based drinks and fruit-based drinks. And they will be taking those results to treasury um hopefully to inform future policy but there's certainly no no immediate plans as you will know from just having heard the budget no immediate plans to extend or upgrade the current policy let's talk then a little bit more about this plans to expand the um the soft drinks levy to other areas of our of our diets i know kate that sustain this is something that and as you say as the the project manager um you're really knowledgeable and passionate about so i just let you take it away and tell me what the plans are for the future oh well um so as part of recipe for change the campaign which is us at sustain but also um cat and, and colleagues at obesity health alliance and also the food foundation um and we've got a coalition of 42 organizations in total so sort of rural colleges and health and um food charities um so we are calling for a new industry levy um to help make our food healthier so this is 
based on the idea that we we know the soft drinks industry levy has been a success um but there is more to do we we all want healthy children who are going to turn into healthy adults in the country um and at the moment that's that's really hard there's too much salt and sugar in our food um there's something like up to, up to 85% of the salt we eat is in our food when we buy it already um and something like 60% of the um sugar we eat at home comes from just three categories of confectionery biscuits and uh desserts so it's really really hard um at the moment to to eat as as little salt and sugar as we need to um so we are calling for this levy and this again would be a tax on food and drinks companies um to get them to change their recipes to reduce the salt and sugar in their food um and similarly to the soft drinks industry levy we're calling for any companies who don't change their recipes to pay pay the levy and for that money to go into funding children's health programs as well um we've also we've done some research or we've um, commissioned some research behind this which has shown that there could be with a new levy up to two million cases of disease prevented um over 25 years and that we're talking about type 2 diabetes um a range of cancers uh cardiovascular disease um and potentially savings um or sort of money up to 77.9 billion pounds um for the economy um in sort of savings to the nhs and increased productivity um so we think this is again a complete win-win a no-brainer it should absolutely go in hand with with other measures as well but um and part of a wider um health and obesity strategy um but just like the soft drinks industry levy this is something that could have a huge impact whilst not needing to change um people's behavior a huge amount hopefully that burden of disease um that includes dental disease as well where it could have a a big impact on because if we can reduce the amount of sugar in foods then that's that's the main thing that we advise people to do is to reduce their sugar intake through foods and drinks and obviously if you don't drink a lot of soft drinks but you eat loads of ready meals or chocolates or things that are packed with sugar and, and preservatives then you can see the benefit without having to actually change your habits, which is, like you say, is, is a winner. And it's really, really great to um, sit and talk to you guys and hear about the good things that are happening um, in the world of nutrition to make our health better without us even really having to think about it because you've thought about it for us. So <laughs> this has been really, really uh, informative, guys. If anyone wanted to learn anything about Recipe for Change, Stain, Action for Sugar, where is the best place for them to go and go and read about this? Yeah, you can um, have a look at our website, which is recipeforchange.org.uk. Um, and on there, we've got lots and lots of information. We've got our campaign report, um, which we launched uh, a few months ago. And that's got sort of the the reasoning behind the, the need for a new levy and, and the potential um, uh, benefits and we've got a lot of kind of evidence briefings on there as well so there's a lot of information up there um, and some of the voices from our coalition talking about why why this is important from from their different perspectives too so I say that's a, a great place to start you can find us at the obesity health alliance and you can see us on twitter as well at oha underscore updates and we represent nearly 60 um, large charities medical organizations rural colleges and campaigning groups as well and we try to be a unified voice for um equitable approaches to improving population health and reducing excess weight so if you want to know anything more about what you're doing do that um, and there's a really interesting series at the moment for the the lords are undertaking an inquiry on diet health and obesity and they've been having a series of experts including many of our alliance members coming in and talking in panel discussions they're about 75 minutes at pop you'll see me and a colleague from sustain and food foundation on the first one and i really do think they're worth going back and having a watch so i hope you'll enjoy them i'm trying to think if there's been a dental ex expert on there yet and i'm I'm not sure if there has been so maybe you need to get yourselves an invite on there <laughs> well karen i know where i'm sending you after we uh after we finish <laughs> up today <laughs> but thank you guys again for um stopping by and talking to us and uh, you can learn any more information about these um initiatives um from what our lovely guests have said i'll link everything in the description uh below uh, that's us for now and we'll see you again soon